It says we're live. <laughs> it's another Monday, everyone. How are you doing? Hello, I am the Niche Lady here live. And I have something super special today. And I know you guys, I know over in my Facebook group, you guys have been really ready for this, um, the Niche to Profit Facebook group. And we got a lot of questions came in down on my community tab about, um, We've got a real live mailman coming on today. But the unique thing is, he is also an eBay seller. So what a great perspective he's going to have for all of you. So here's what I'm going to ask is, I know you guys over in the live chat over there are going to have questions. And if you're watching this after the fact, I'll tell you at the end what you can do to get your questions answered. But if you are, uh, if you have questions and we don't cover your questions, hold it off because I'm going to make sure you have time to ask your questions in the chat. Whereas if you ask it now, it's probably going to get lost. So just kind of hang tight on that and we'll make sure everybody gets their questions answered. So first, I wanted to give you a little peek at... Um, of Joey Bada Bing 22 and his personality. We're going to see if this works. I'm going to play a little, little part over from his YouTube channel and uh, let's give it a shot. Here we go. I wonder if I can full screen this. Let's see. Here we go. All right. Joey bought it for $4. Joey bought it for $4. I'm going to edit that out. Yeah, well. Let's go! So this video is sponsored by Coco Pebbles. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What's up, guys? It's a good morning for me, maybe a good afternoon or a good night for you guys. Let me try some. But if you guys don't know who I am, this is Joey Bada Bing 22, your local mailman. And I am a full-time mailman, part-time reseller, and today is my day off. And you know what that means. We're either going thrifting. We're going to pack up some shipment. We got stuff to ship out. We got things to do today. I'm super excited. And I can't wait for you to come with me on this journey. If you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit that bell. And smack that like button for me baby all at one time let's go so i'm gonna finish this bowl of cereal and let's have a good day get myself back on here <laughs> so there's more to that video um but uh, i just wanted you to get a little little peek at joey's uh personality there and now i gotta get my screen back to where i can see the questions that came in here. Ah, where are they go? Okay. And without further ado, let's just bring them on. And by the way, this is the first time I've had a guest on. So Joey, you're the first. Let's bring you on here. What's up? <laughs> What's going on? Ooh, I got my speaker turned way up loud. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hello. Well, I mean, your channel is Joey Bada Bing 22. Yes. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do. I will. So thank you, uh, Danny, so much for letting me, your first interviewee type deal um, on your channel. I just want to thank you so much, Danny. Um, but I'm Joey Bada Bing 22, your local mailman. And um, I am a full-time mailman and a part-time reseller. And the way I got into reselling, um, I was delivering mail. And I this lady always had packages, like every single day. And I'm like, how can you have so many packages like 
at the front door every single day. And I, I knew nothing. Like I know what eBay is, but like, I never knew what like, like reselling. I never knew anything about it. So I knocked on the front door. I had the courage and I knocked on the door. She opened the door and I was like, Hey, I'm your mailman. And I'm just wondering what, what's going on here? Like you have so many packages. Like what is the deal? And she was like, I'm an eBay reseller. And I was like, no way. Like that's, that's cool. Um, you know, she like gave me the little down low about it and what she sells like little knickknacks and stuff. And, um, she was like, yeah, like check out my eBay store. I was like, okay. And I checked her eBay store out. And then I, I looked up like eBay reselling on YouTube and I found rally roots and I found Harry tornado and that was it. And I watched so many videos and Harry tornado is like one of my best friends now. So it's like really, really cool. And I'm just living the dream and I'm just so happy and I can't wait to do it full time one day. So that's me. <laughs> what you don't, you don't love delivering the mail. I do. And that's the thing. <laughs> I, I have such a great job. I really, really do. And I yeah. love doing it. It's just life is just so precious and it's so short. And I just like really want to have fun. Like I, that's all I want to do is, and I, when I'm, when I have like a day off like this, I'm going like out to like thrift stores, Goodwill, Salvation Armies. And sometimes on the weekends when I go to garage sales or flea markets, it, I'm just myself. And when I could be with my girlfriend or my family and like when I have kids in the future, like I just want to be there for them. And I just, ha I just have such a bright future and I just can't wait to just like, jump into it you know so you just have the most infectious energy this this positivity about you that's that's why i love watching your channel because thank you're just you like, <laughs> you're just you're just a happy guy i mean and that's, and that's kind of like my motto i like i end every single video with you know go be profitable and make it fun yeah. because i mean like you say we only have so many days in this life right. and doing something you love and you have fun with makes it so you're not really working exactly that's the best part that's the yeah. best part and i have to laugh at your little your slip up in your little video there when you're talking about shipping because i do a sh you know i do shipping videos every week and that's our that everybody told me like the one time i said let's go get ship done yeah they're like oh yeah, yeah right they're that's like it. that's why i slowed down i was like did i just say a bad word like i don't think i did <laughs> you know but i was like whoa I was I like, how do we word for, that? I keep waiting for YouTube to kind of like tag me on saying a bad right? word because I'm I like, know. kind of in context, it sounds like it, but exactly. oh, good. We all have ship to do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So should we jump into some questions? Let's do it. I'm, I'm down okay. for it. And like I said, over in the live chat here, hold your question. If it doesn't get answered, because it just might, because we've got some really good questions come in. Hold it off and then we'll we'll focus on the chat and answer your questions live. All right, let's go here. Oh, does putting fragile sticker or writing fragile on a box really matter? Are these packages actually handled any different than a regular old box? So that's a really good question. And I can answer that with, um, no, not really. <laughs> I, I just, I don't think that any type of package will be held like with care. Like I really don't think so. And the reason why I say that is because when I go into my post office and they're dispersing the packages to each route, you know, they're, they pick it up, they scan it, and then they throw it into the bin. You know, um, I always tell even my people, anybody in the world, you guys, anyone, make sure you really take care of your package because it will break stuff will happen. And it's just the way it happens, you know, it's got to get to point A to point B. And I always tell my people, like, I don't normally do glass. Like I'm more of the things that are more like that I have is like VCRs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I have to really bubble wrap that really good because if I don't make a crack or something like that, um, but always package your stuff up. Even if you put fragile on it, I mean, it does catch like the mailman's eye. Like when you're delivering the package, like me, like I'm holding it like it's a baby, you know? But um, I, as the, when you get, when the mailman gets it, it's very carefully done. I do it. Other mailman, I don't know, but I'm just such a good mailman. I, I want to make sure it gets there correctly. So Well, you're also, like you said, you're getting it at the end of the processing. And, and right. what I tell people is priority mail goes up to, correct me if I'm wrong, 70 pounds. Yes, we only okay. can carry a, yeah. 
I mean, not that there's a lot of 70 pound packages, but let's face it, if you get the luck of the draw, you have your item in the bin, somebody comes along with that 70 pound object and throws it on top of yours. Right. And uh, what's what's yeah. great about the post office is that's why they do first class because first class packages, you know, you could have a little small glass, like one of my YouTube right. viewers sent me like a little like, oh, Bolo Buddy sent this to me. Um, and it has like the mail in it. It was pretty cool. Um, but, um, you know, if you send something first class like that, they're light packages. So just in case if you have some, you know, like dumbbells, like some weights that can crush the whole box. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, just gotta be really, really careful. Yeah. And with eBay, it's really cool because you can get first class up to 16 ounces. Right. If you go to the counter, it's 13 ounces. Yeah. Yeah. Cut off. So, <laughs> yeah. Make sure you're, you're buying those labels off eBay. Yes. But so I was doing something in my shipping videos and I got so many negative comments. Literally, I work in my garage and when I after I finish packaging and I do a lot of glass, I toss it across the floor. Yeah. Like and I tell people like if you're not confident tossing that package across the floor, it's yeah. not ready to go. Nope. Not ready to go. And I've been doing this for 20 22 years on eBay. And I think I can count on one hand how many things have broken in right. shipping. And I know one of those, a global shipping program did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's really hard. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, you just got to package the heck out of it and yeah. be confident with it. But see, I like to tell them, too, that the fragile is for your buyer. It's for your customer's perspective that right. you took some extra care. So mm -hmm. it's... It does matter, you guys, in that as aspect. It's like, put it on there. It's all good. Your customer likes it, but they're not treating it any different. Nope. <laughs> no soccer playing, no. no running it under the trucks. Nope. You know? <laughs> sure you've heard all of the, uh, the little crazy stories. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. What do we got next? I have a hard time knowing what's safe to ship in bubble mailers. How likely are they to be crushed? Um, considering like what the package is. So like, let's just say like, if you have a padded flat rate, um, like if you put a mug inside of it, you know, um, people, people do it and it gets there successfully sometimes. Um, but you never know, like even cause it's a priority, it's a priority package. So like something that's like I said, some weights that could crush it, you know what I mean? Um, and I would definitely put it in a box, but that's up to, you know, you're saving the most money for shipping as possible, but you know, if you took the extra couple, three to four bucks, it will get there, you know, successfully. So that's what yeah. I have to say. I, I do do the shipping the mug in the box in the padded flat rate if okay. it's a lower end item. Okay. If it's a high end item, I do not. Right. But so far, knock yeah. on wood. Knock on wood. I've had good luck. And it's all about, you know, just like placing the handle in the appropriate place and still bubble wrapping and it's in the box, you know, right. so. Yeah. Let's see. I've heard it's a very miserable job from several male and ex male carriers. There's no real question there, but I think you addressed that a little bit. So let's just get that out of the way. <laughs> um, you know, any nine to five job, you know, no matter what it is, um, it, it's going to be tough. And with what we, what we do, especially now with, you know, with the illness and the virus and everything, um, it's been tough. A lot of packages, you know, I could, I could account for that. A lot of people, other mailmans in here or anybody that works for the, any kind of postal service will tell you that it's very heavy right now, but the mail has been a little bit light. Um, but the packages are just through the roof. Um, the only miserable thing, and I don't want to get in trouble with the post office. I, I won't, but it's just management. Sometimes, you know, they, they want you to be, you know, back at a certain time. Yeah, it's it's a normal thing. Everyone has it. Oh, you know? so they do give you like a, you know. Yeah, you got to be back before the truck because, you know, the truck has to leave at a certain time to get the, to the distru. I always say this word wrong. Distribution center. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's got to get there, you know, to because it has to catch a plane. You know, it's like you're catching your flight, you know, for your own, you know, if you're going out for traveling. But, you know, we got it. Everyone has like a certain standard. You know, you got to be on time. So it's difficult at times because, you know. It, I'm sure everyone's gotten the bulk mail where it's trash mail, you know? So, um, yeah, it's, it's I tough. We can get away. We all like, I, just, that can go away. We don't need all that junk. It's anymore. so funny, but like, that's how we get paid, you know? I know, I know. And I look at it, it's like, this is how I get paid. So 
I'm kind of thankful, you I know. Mean, back, so. back in the day when I was an Avon lady, mm -hmm. I, you know, it was in the day where you went and you handed out all your books and all that. I thought there's gotta be a better way to do this. And I right. used bulk mail. I mm -hmm. started mailing out literally hundreds yeah. of those little catalogs. Yeah. <laughs> so you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But let's see. All right. Oh, so so what holds you up in that? Like, so obviously they know your route and you get the schedule pickup. So you do they give you extra time if you have a lot of pickups or how does that work? So you have like probably let's say five minutes, but I mean, it depends like some carrier or not some carrier, some um, pickups will have, you know, let's say 10 packages or maybe it's just one, you know, cause I have, I change routes from then when I, when I told you guys like how I got into reselling, um, I've changed routes. And what I do is like, when you have your regular mailman, I'm your like permanent backup. Like I'm your literal backup. Um, so I I'm called a T six and, um, so I have different routes every day, but I have some people who have packages still. Like I can see that they sell on eBay, but like the people that I pick up from, they only have like, let's say five at the most, you know? So it's nothing crazy like us, you know? So, um, and what was I going to say? <laughs> uh, so like the delays and the amount of time they give you. Right. Oh, so, yeah. so basically they give you about five minutes, but for me, I'm quick. You know, I just walk up to the door. They got a couple packages. I scan them, you know, cause I personally, I want them scanned if they were my packages, you know? Yeah. So I always scan them and then I put them into my truck just so they got the scan point. Cause some mail, some people, like I even tested it. I tested where I didn't scan my package and I just dispersed it like where it was supposed to go, like priority, first class, media mail, whatever it is. Um, and it won't scan it won't scan until it gets to the final destination, which is crazy. What That's I don't understand yeah. how that happens, but I'm sure people have had that in the past. Um, always make sure your package gets scanned because then your, your buyer will be like, where's my package? You know, it's like, I, sure. I ship it out, but you know, they didn't scan it, you know? So. And, and do they, do they, is it part of your, your job description? Do they tell you to scan the packages when you pick them up or when Where's you get the we're actually supposed to bring them. We're not even supposed to scan them because that wastes time, you know, <laughs> like, oh. so they want us to come back once we're back at the post office and dispersing like our, you know, letters that, you know, let's say Christmas cards and all that kind of stuff. They want us to scan it at the post office, which I don't believe that. I think it should get scanned right then and there because what if something happens if the manager's like, oh, we need you to come do this. You know what I mean? It's like- Well, I would think it kind of covers you too. I mean, right. got the ring cameras and stuff, they know right. it got picked up by you. Yes. And if it doesn't get scanned anywhere and ends up missing, like who's mm -hmm. the person gonna point to, you right. know? So that's why I always take the chance. I'm just like, I'm gonna scan it now because I do not want to get in trouble. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. My my mail lady, she she scans them too. Good. I usually though, if I have more than ten, I'll drive it down and and drop it off myself because I just right. feel bad. <laughs> no, don't feel bad because like that's our job, you know. So, you know, I would definitely, you know, what I would do for my mailman is like I would give them water bottles or you know, like to say, hey, I'm just so thankful for you because you guys help. You know, you're my business, really. You know, so. Well, if it's funny because that's our next question is what kinds of gifts or tokens of appreciation would postal workers and yeah, those at the post office like? Also, would it be a good idea to let your local post office know that you will be mailing packages more frequently? Um, all I can say is with the shipment, um, I would just pick up schedule and just they, they have a section where it says how many packages, what's the weight, you right. know, and stuff like that. Um, so definitely do that. You don't have to worry about it's Christmas. You know, everyone knows like that it's, we're going to be out there longer picking up packages or sending out packages. So, um, and with, you know, like tips and stuff, they say, don't give tips to your mailman, but I mean, it's just, you know, the right thing to do. You know, they, they work, we, we, we really do work really hard, you know, and it, like making sure you guys get the right mail, uh, the right names in the mailbox. Like I'm sure people in here have, you know, had mail that's, the right address with the different name and they're like this isn't my mail <laughs> you know what i mean and there's people that freak out you know but yeah. you know i i try to make sure that the right mail goes to the right house um and with tips i mean 
it's, you know, I would never say like, Hey, I would love money. You know what I mean? But like, whatever, whatever you think that you should give to your, you know, mailman, it, you know, is what you should give them. You know, even if it's a credit card or not a credit card, <laughs> a gift card, <laughs> like a gift card to like, you know, lunch or something like that. You know, yeah. that's, that's awesome. You know, that would mean the whole world to me, a $5 gift card, whatever it is, you know, wa a water bottle, that speaks a million words because I, in Florida, I do know that is in the summer here because oh, well, Florida gets pretty hot too. Oh but you know, when it's 115 out here and they're out working and they got packages to pick up, I always love a cold water and a nice. Yeah. Note. I love flowers. Like gold. That's I love, gold. I know my my uh, my carrier is a woman, so I love oh, flowers. Oh, <laughs> oh nice. <laughs> It's funny. Um, I know there was like there was one day where it must have been uh, a substitute because the flower got set aside. You know. <laughs> right. All right. Let's see. Good questions. Good questions. Uh, awesome. so why? Why sorry, do they keep rotating mail carriers to different neighborhoods? And she says, "I have one carrier that is wonderful, picks up packages, and others that don't take the packages from the mailbox that I have scheduled for pickup." I put notes on packages to pick up and even then some do not pick them up. How do I remedy that? <laughs> that's tough. Um, so let's just say like there's a regular carrier and that's the carrier that you see every week, all week long. And then there's people like me when you have to have a day off in the week, you know, you can't, <laughs> you can't be there every single day, you know? So I'm your permanent backup, but if I'm not there, then there's these people called CCAs and they are, they are the backup for like vacation people or for, you know, if they're sick or something like that, they're the people that fill in. Um, so those are the people who were like me, like about a year ago. Um, and I would, I would be the complete backup. And some people like, they just don't care. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like they just, well, they see a package and like, I'm not getting out of the mail truck. I got to go because you know, just think about like, all right, if, if you have a whole route to do, right. And then you have to do a piece, which means that you're doing a little piece off of someone else's route and you got packages to do. Like it's, it's a lot of work. It's, it, it really is. And when you're just starting off, like people just, they'll just go right past it and they will see the note. And I'm like, how could you do that? Like someone has a business, you know, even before, you know, I actually can't say that because I didn't really know about eBay, but I knew to pick up packages whenever they, whenever it says, Hey, I got a package here. You know, I can't fit in the mailbox obviously, but I have it at the front door. I would always, you know, I, I run, like I just do, like, I just want to make sure I want to give the best customer service as possible. And I'm just a really nice person in general. So, um, you know, um, and what was the other question I think like pertaining that? Oh, which is like, so why, well, you just explained why we, you rotate neighborhoods and, oh, okay. you know, what I'm thinking too, is like, if you have like one of those, the mailbox, like the bank of, and you guys just open a door and put the yeah. mail in there. So if there's a package sitting there, it could possibly get overlooked just because you think it, it could be something that the customer didn't. Right. You know, but the only thing is, the only thing is with that, um, the mail, like, if you ever see like a bit, like you said, like a business or something like that, and they have the little box and we open it with the arrow key, um, you only could fit in letters inside the outgoing mail. I will say outgoing mail on it. And right. what people have done, which I see in, on my routes, um, it, it's called, you know, staples, like the, the store. And they usually have some packages going out from people like coming in there trying to ship out, you know, some items. And um, they'll have, you know, we have packages at the store. So like I would have to take that and then walk all the way over to Staples, go inside and say, hey, you guys have a package? And they're like, yeah. And then I would have to take it, you know? So like if you ever, like if you're in a business, if, if you guys are part time, um, I would suggest that if you, maybe if you can't make it to the post office, um, make a nice little placard or something like that, put it in the mailbox and says, hey, please pick up my packages, you know? And they'll come, I mean, I, well, I would, you know, but other people should, you know. Well, I know there's an option when you're when you're scheduling a pickup. I know there's an option to even like ring the doorbell. Right. I um, mean, how annoying is that though? They even with the precautions like with COVID and stuff, um, we're not really supposed to like come up to the front door. Like we're really not. Um, so like that's why we 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 tell people just leave it by the front door, but there's actually, you know, sometimes there's apartment buildings where there's people that yeah, live. Right. Afraid to you because they're going to get right. stuck. So like then 
I'm going to ring the doorbell, <laughs> you know, so I have to, you know, I, I'm not going to be like, oh, I can't take your baggage. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, if you just ring the doorbell, step, you know, take a couple steps back and I'll say, hey, you guys have a package? And they're like, yeah. So like, they'll give it to me and, you know, just taking the precautions, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see what else. Again, we had another like, what's the best way to thank them during the holiday season? How do we submit a compliment or positive survey for their excellent service throughout the year? What are things we can do to make their job easier or their day a little brighter? <laughs> um, I appreciate that question. Um, viewers too. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, what, what I would do is if you're ever going to ship out a package and you have to go drop it off at the post office, say, hey, can I talk to a supervisor or a manager or somebody? And um, just say, hey, you know, this mailman was awesome. You know, I got their name, their bill, whatever, <laughs> whatever their name is. Um, they're just such a great person, you know, you know, and they'll look over that and they'll say, hey, you know, they actually will go to um, what's it called? They might like submit it to like the upper, like upper top, like in Washington, D.C. And you, they, they sometimes send out like letters and stuff from up top and they'll say, hey, you know, thank you for your great customer service. You know, it's awesome. You know, you're doing such a great job. So that's like that's really good, like appreciation, you know, to like a mailman because that, that would make me feel awesome. You know, I haven't gotten that yet, but I, I don't know if I ever will. But um, but yeah, I, I I appreciate that question because like we, I work really hard, like no matter what, like I just want to make sure. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to make sure the mail gets there. And um, so. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty amazing system. If you think about it, like. I mean, this is something that used to be done, you know, uh, on horseback with right. <laughs> stage coaches and it would take yeah. weeks to get a letter to somebody, sometimes months to get a letter to somebody. Like now we're literally like, if it's not there the next day, you know, right. <laughs> people go crazy. Making that happen is just ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, you got to really think the process of like where your package goes and where it's going, you know, I mean, it will get there. Eventually it will get there, but you know, sometimes people misplace like a package, like they'll put it, let's just say you have 8602 Camden circle or something like that. And there's 8602 Hamden circle. It looks the same, you know, yeah. the same word, same number, you know, you just got to really pay attention as a mailman, just watch the actual name, <laughs> you know what I mean? So and hopefully, you know, like I just had it happen. I had one of my neighbor's packages delivered to my house because yeah. I get so many packages. I'm sure right. it was assumed that those numbers were, you know, right. fine. And I, I walked it over and he was like, oh my gosh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah, because some people, they will literally take the package and like we will, we will oh, have yeah. to like, yeah, yeah. They, they just take it and like, oh, this is a cool package. It was delivered, so they're they're kind of out. I mean, yeah, it's whew. so then if you guys like this is a good uh segue into that. Um, if you ever have a package that you sent out to one of your buyers and they say, Hey, it says delivered, but I don't have the package. Um, basically what you can tell your buyer is that it has tracking. So, like, let's just say like my scanner. I scanned it in front of a different house, so like a block over, and um, it's the same number, but it's a different street and everything because they only look at the number. And they say, all right, that's 8602. Um, there's a tracker on the scanner of exactly where you scan that package is where it could be at, like a GPS scanner, let's just say. Okay. Um, so I would say, hey, to the buyer, hey, go to your you know local post office, wherever you know your you know USPS is, and um, just go in there and say, hey, my package said, you know, it was delivered, but it's not delivered to the right house. And then they will try the best they can to try to track down your package um, exactly where it was scanned. So, so, um, so this brings me to something very interesting. So I had a mistake. I ordered a couple of things off of Etsy and I had an old address on there. Oh. And so it showed delivered. Right. And I'm like, ah, oh, shoot. So I actually went over to the address oh, where wow. I live and I talked to the people and they seemed really nice. And they told me that they stuck it back in the mail as no longer at this address. Right. But I'm being told the fact that it hasn't scanned back in anywhere that they probably didn't do that. Is that um, so they have done it and it's still somewhere like in the world <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Um, so what, what that is, 
what I would do as a mailman if I say, hey, this was at the wrong wrong name, good address, wrong name. So it's a return to sender. So what would happen is the package would get returned to the sender because they can't send it anywhere else. They can't right. send They already got it to the destination, but it's not them. So let's return it back to the sender. Um, so hopefully the business has or whoever your person yeah, I've been is. In touch and they're saying they haven't got it and the tracking hasn't changed at all. So that's so tough. Like, yeah, we're assuming that. Maybe Someone, that not so honest with me. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I and that that's terrible, you know, because yeah. it's good to be. I'm an honest person. That's yeah, the way we should, right? you know, everybody should be. But it's you'll just come back and bite you if you're not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what else we got here. Okay, how do you like to package breakables? <laughs> Um, what did I have that was, you know, I, I try not to buy those things <laughs> and I don't know what to look for. Honestly, I don't know what to look for in glass, um, or any oh, type of breakable, <laughs> any type of breakable. I really don't know. Like I just try to stay away from it, you know, but it's, it, I'm sure it's easy. Um, I just bubble wrap it, put it in a box, you know, and I would shake it, you know, like let's, let's say the VCRs that I, I, I do the electronics, you know, I will shake it. You know, I, I want to make sure that it's not going to move at all, you know, so just bubble wrap the heck out of it, <laughs> you know, so yeah. or package pa or packaging like pa like the brown paper or newspapers or I, I'm still a, a packing peanuts girl. I'm Are you really see like yeah. I, I couldn't do that. That's I don't know. I, no, I could Because mostly what I sell is breakables and the paper just doesn't have the shock absorption. God, gotcha. styrofoam does. You're right. You're right. You're right. And they're cheaper than bubble wrap. I mean, I could just, you know, oh, really? call bubble wrap, but then your cost goes up and shipping the peanuts are way. They're, they're weighed. Yeah. 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 Got you. All right. Let's see. How many packages are ruined in wet weather and how should we prevent it? You just can't prevent that. You know, it's mother nature. Um, it's tough. You know, if it's a rainy day, like, and it's just a terrible day and, you know, we, I, I try to protect it as much as I can. Um, the mail, the mail, um, trucks are old. They're literally like 40 to 50 years old. I'm not even, kidding. I don't even know how we're still driving them. And, it, <laughs> and it, if anybody in the world ever listens to this from USPS, we need new mail trucks. We need AC. It's so hot in the mail truck. We have a circle fan, like literally just a, zzz, like that's what we have. So, um, I lost track. What was, oh, oh, yeah. oh. Yeah, protect. You're saying the trucks leak. <laughs> yeah, no. Sometimes they do, and um, like I've had packages where they were soaking wet. I'm like, the doors are closed. Like, there's no way that like this package is wet, you know. But the water somehow gets in, you know. Um, and you know, th there's really no way like to do it, you know. Other than, well, I guess what I can say is, you know, get a little plastic bag. You know, I have like these little poly mailers, but like you know, like the clear coat ones stick like if I, I sell a lot of hats and stuff so like i will put you know i will put a hat in here and then put it in a box you know so yeah. just so like if it ever does get wet or something like that um that it has some type of protection you know um so that's what i would do if i were you and then as far as like the label so i know when the scanning the first came out we were told oh don't tape over the barcode it's totally cool to tape over the barcode now right yeah. Yes, yeah. you can you can put it as long as it's clear tape. If you put clear yeah. tape over it, if, as long as it's clear tape, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. I believe they upgraded the scanners like a couple of years ago. And we actually just got another upgrade. We just got oh, new scanners yeah. because now they're catching us like backing up and stuff. It's a lot of craziness. <laughs> yeah, Yvonne goes, oh my gosh, do they at least have AC? No. No. <laughs> no, I can't even imagine that here in Vegas. Oof. Yeah. Or in Florida, because you got the humidity there in Florida. Like, have you have you guys seen the new Amazon trucks that are out? The vans? Uh, yeah. See, yeah. that's what we need, you know? Like, I feel like we should Those upgrade. Are like, aren't they like Mercedes vans or something? Yeah, they are. But they're, you know, I mean, but if that's what it takes, I mean, I think yeah. we we should we should get them, <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. So. Let's, oh, we don't want our, we don't want our postage to go up so you can have them. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact about that. Um, we are not owned by the government. Like we're right. government associated, yep. but all of our money comes from stamps and packages. Yep. 
that, I mean, serious. Like that's the way it is. Absolutely. Okay, here's a good one. As a letter carrier, what is your biggest pet peeve? <laughs> um, probably animals. I I don't really have pet peeves, but um, people just open the door and just let their dogs you know, like just run out. Like I sometimes like they might be nice, but I've been bit by like five dogs. I was gonna say before. most dogs do not like yeah. the man. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's <laughs> it's it's right in the movies. It, it does happen. <laughs> wow. Um, but I, I, that's probably my only pet peeve. I, I love my job. I really do. It's a really good job. It has its pros and cons. Like being hot is a con, but a pro is just, I have a great job. You know, I really you should wear a GoPro. Like some of that would be like viral video stuff. You know that, right? We're, just, we're not allowed to because. Oh, you're not? Yeah, we're not. All right. I would. I'd be the first person to do it. <laughs> but the UPS and the, and the FedEx guys, they got their TikTok channels going, you know? See, like, I don't know how they do that because I, I think I would get fired, honestly, because yeah. it's we have federal, you know, mail, you know, if you ever seen an address, names, yeah. um, packages, you know, I, I really don't understand how that's even possible that because, sense. like, you know, I... I'm like, I would be like, yeah, let me get my video out. But I just, I have such a great job. I, I wouldn't want to lose it over just a video. But I, I think now I think I want to just so I can be a full-time reseller. <laughs> but so. Yeah, well, but you don't have to go that route to be the full-time. Well, hey, I mean, hey, if that's what it takes. <laughs> <say. laughs> okay, we can get you motivated without having to get fired. No, it's, it's just a joke. <laughs> that's funny though. Yeah, the dog thing. I yeah, I mean, even just like me, like walking my dogs, I get scared when you know people like let their dogs loose. It's, oh it's yeah, they're scary. friendly, they're fine. Yeah, it's scary. Oh. Like I get nervous. Like imagine a yeah. big like I had all right, funny story here. Yeah. Um, I was delivering packages, like just packages. It was like Christmas time, like a couple years ago. And um this house, I was just driving past it and I seen like a little fire coming out of a pot, like just like a little like plant pot or something like that. And I guess the person who lived there, they were, you know, smoking cigarettes or something and it, they threw it in their pot and then it like caught on fire. So like you see like this pot and like on top you see like little flames and I'm like, that's, that's not like, there's no fire. Like, you know, like a campfire or something like that. That's a fire. <laughs> like, you know, so I ran, I had put the truck in park and I ran up to the house and I knocked on the door and you hear hoo, 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 like, I'm like, oh my gosh, why is this happening right now? Like, this dog's gonna get me. Like, so the lady just opens the door and a German shepherd comes out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, and just bolts at me. I run all the way to the mail truck and I jump in, I close the door, and the dog like literally went like on the door, like, like, <laughs> like that. I was like, oh my gosh, like I was gonna <laughs> die. Like, so I swear. Yeah. <laughs> I, it was so terrible and i i didn't even get to tell the lady what happened <laughs> now you see a fire going so i roll down the window and i'm like your house is on fire <laughs> and i was i just like drove away and she saw it and i was like i was like oh my gosh <laughs> i had a period of time i was living at this house and i was not getting my mail delivered i'm like what is going on i know i had mail coming today we'll find yeah. out the neighbor's dog could jump up on the fence and he would sit there on the top of this brick fence staring her down. Oh my God. So like, I came out of my truck. Yeah, right? I'm not he never came off of the fence. He just stayed up there, but it's like, oh yeah, that would be a little terrifying. Yeah, it is. It's scary. You know, like this is what I got bit bad once. Like I, I really did. I was just that people were outside and they were painting like, like little touch ups, like on the gutters or something like that. And, um, like I walk up, I have the package and I was like, Hey, like, where, where do you want this? And like, they were like, Oh, just put it by the front door. So I go to walk up to the front door, halfway up the driveway, the little kid opens the door and a black lab, like just comes like slowly walking out. I was like, all right, I'll just pet it. I'm like, Hey, what's up? <laughs> so like it walks up to me and like turns its head like this. And I'm like, Oh, that's kind of weird. And like, he just grabs onto my shin and I'm like, Oh my God, I take the package and I just like hit him on the head and I love animals, you know, but like I hit him on the head and he like backed up and I just, I was bleeding. I was like, Oh my gosh. Like I, I ran into the mail truck and they were like, as I was driving away, 
they were like, we have their medical papers. Like, that's all I heard. And I was like, I'm going straight to the post office, <laughs> you know? Oh, man. But the funny thing is about that is we're supposed to have a satchel, like, you know, like the bag, like it will say post office on it. And we have to hold like dog spray as well. Like, and I didn't have that on. Like, I was just, you know, I'm not going to wear that. It's I'm million- like right in the moment, you know, like how quick would you really be able to respond to that? You know, like how am I going to take the bag off my shoulder and hit it or try to move it? Yeah, I have dog spray ready in my hand. Like, I'm just not going to carry that, you know, like, that's like corporate solution. <laughs> yeah. So like if somebody said you know, in a boardroom here, there's the policy. <laughs> yeah. But listen, if, if, if I were to report that I would be considered unsafe as a worker and like, I would have to like, I would get in trouble like for getting bit by a dog, like just right. because I didn't have my satchel or the dog spray in my hand. Like right. I don't want to do that to the dog, but I don't want to get bit, but <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. Well, I know they've gotten, you know, there's even like a question on the, the schedule of pickup. Is there a dog here? So yeah. is that, that makes me think I always check. No, even though I have dogs because it's not like, an, so is that, for situations like that where somebody may answer the door and a dog come out kind of thing, or is it a loose dog in a yard? That was just the door open and the dog ran out like every time. That's, yeah. that's the only that time question on the schedule of pickup thing. Is that they have an option where it says dog on property. They have that. So they, um, you want to know if the dog lives there, period. Right. And, oh, but, but also, also with pertaining that, Um, on our scanners, if we come up to a house that like, let's just say like the dog that I got bit from, they put it in the scanner and it says like dog alert. Like it will say it on the scanner. Like this house has a, let's just say a pit bull or something like that. And it will show that there's a dog there and it says like, beware of dog on the scanner. Like it will pop up. And I'm like, that's pretty (laughs) scary. So, I mean, it's cool. No, though. Yeah, it really is. Okay. What is the most interesting looking mail that you've ever delivered? Um, Probably like international mail. Like let's just say like a package that came from like Sweden or something like that. It looks, I mean, it's a package. It's a square box, but it, the way they have their wording and stuff, it just looks different. Like, um, but like I've, I've shipped out like, like tires before. Um, yeah. It's, it's weird. Like, like weird packages. Like, let's just say, like have you ever have you ever bought like a sound speaker before and they have like a weird angle and like there's a long side and there's like a short side like i've i've delivered stuff like that um nothing too crazy <laughs> nothing too crazy i'm thinking most of that big stuff comes you know like fedex or ups and yeah sometimes like we do get like just regular just tires like and they'll just have a label on the tire i'm like this is weird <laughs> you know but that's more of a ups fedex type of thing we just get like small boxes that are really heavy sometimes, but it's got to be careful. It's so funny. My dogs are, my dogs are always like right here at my feet. They must know I'm talking to a mailman because they are nowhere to be found. <laughs> <laughs> far, far away. <laughs> okay. Let's see. We got one more question that came in and then we'll get over to the chat questions. Okay. So what's one thing you see people do when shipping packages that you wish they would do differently? How can we ensure our packages will get to their destination safe and sound? Okay. So one thing I can say for that is like, all right, if like, if you know how if you print out a label and sometimes like the label doesn't scan, like the barcodes, like there's like lines, like there's lines in the the barcode, but like sometimes there'll be a complete line where it didn't print out and maybe you have to get a new printer because like I've, I've had sometimes where I go to the same house and like, I can't scan it. So I have to manually put it inside the scanner when it should just scan. Like I don't have time. Like I have time, but like other people don't have time just to type in the 20 digits like that are on the thing. Um, um, I just say, you know, I would tell the people, Hey, you know, you're going to have to get a new printer or maybe new ink or something like that. Uh, (laughs) Or I mean, most of us probably have rollers. Those things are amazing. The thing is like, Greg's in here. I see Greg Stewart. I've been saying I'm going to get a Rolo for like probably like six months. I haven't bought one yet. Oh, <laughs> I it, still, is, it is a life changer. I know. I, I just print out. Yeah. I had someone 
buy one for me. I was still printing out on my inkjet and, and tape. I used my scissors and I used my clear tape and I just. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, the Rolo, you're going to go, oh, I why know. Did I do sooner? I'm, I'm trying to see if maybe Santa Claus will bring you, you know, for Christmas. <laughs> if not. I'm not an affiliate, but somebody who's an affiliate has a 10% off coupon you can use. Yeah. So just find somebody without affiliate code. I'm going to try. <laughs> 10%, you know. It's yeah. not, actually, it's not that expensive for. I know. It's just like a, the, like to do it. I know. You know? I know. And I can, because I used to do Amazon. So I've worked with Dymos, and Dymos are kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, I bought one and I was like, I, I tried to hook it up to my computer. And I'm like, this, this is thing is so plug and play. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it's literally yeah. like open it, stick the label thing in, boom, print. Yeah. Which is really funny. On the video that you showed um, of me and my brother, I sold a Dymo because I bought it for my my eBay business and I bought it to use. And I was like, I can't get this thing started. I bought it for 80 bucks on Facebook marketplace and I sold it for $199. So there I was like, go. Hey, I made my profit. I'm going to buy a Rolo now. So <laughs> yes, no, you won't regret it. I'm telling okay. you, it's a, it is a game changer. <laughs> I'm so happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, chat. It's your turn. <laughs> Let's see. I know some question. questions have kind of been coming in, but go ahead and type your question again because we probably didn't see it. I'm a fan of the QR codes and post office printing the label. Yeah, that is a new feature that eBay has now. I think that was pretty brilliant of them. So you can still get your discounted shipping, but if you want to go to the counter, which I don't know why any of you want to go to the counter, but if you want to go to the counter, no. um, all they have to do is scan that QR code and they'll print the label. Hmm. I don't think I have been to the counter of a post office. It's got to be five years. I, I really, just, yeah, just don't um, do everything online or huh. I drop off at the, I go to the bulk mail in the back. Oh, let's see here. All right. Hold on guys. Let me find your questions here. Ah, da -da 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 -da. Oh, let's talk about late deliveries because I hear a lot of people talking that um, that there's holiday deadlines given, but are they really feasible? Like, should we bump up those days or do we believe? I, I, I wouldn't do that personally. It's, it's going to get there. It's, I mean, it, you know, even with the exponential of so many more packages, you know, coming in, um, just normally do what you normally do because it's going to get there. I think they're just trying to make money personally. I, I do. <laughs> yeah. And Lisa, I'm sorry. I saw you ask that over, but here we go. Let's ask it. Wrapping things in brown paper, yay or nay. So like, I've actually really thought about that because I, I just bought a, um, a rock band set that was at, at Goodwill. I bought it for $37.99 and I haven't, uh, listed it yet, but um, I'm thinking about, I have it with the box. So like, let's just say we just put the brown paper on it and just ship it out. You know, I feel like that's a good idea. Um, rather than putting it in a, that box into another box, you know, um, I, I want to try it. I think I want to make a video about it as well. I've been thinking about that. My concern has always been, and I do this even like on my poly bags that have any loose edges. I try to make sure there's nothing that can get caught on processing equipment. Right. And if I was heard that the brown paper, if you don't get it like tightly sealed and taped up, can do that. I think if you make sure you've got nothing, you know, like no loose seams or anything, tape that all up, right? It'd be okay. But just don't give it any reason to have trouble. Right. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yeah, it's still hearing that things are moving slow in some areas. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you still got the COVID stuff going around too. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, what is the right thing to do if you get someone else's mail in your box? Do you have to find the address and put it in their box? So, no. Um, what I advise you to do is just put it back in the mailbox and just either just maybe like a little post it note and just put on there and just saying, you know, this isn't my mail or, and then they'll see that it's the wrong address, obviously, because they go up to the mailbox and they'll see it. You know, they made a mistake. Um, that's what I would do. Other people like, like my dad, like he'll say like, I just throw away the mail. I'm like, 
why? Like that's someone's mail, dude. Like, do that. <laughs> like, what are you doing? You know, but a lot of people have that mentality where it's like, this isn't mine. I'm just going to throw it away, you know, but it could be like, like I, I was waiting for my um, YouTube um, like revenue thing. Like I needed the pin code to put in and I, I never got it. So I'm like, dad, did you throw away my like letter? <laughs> you know? Because my, my address was still, when I signed up for YouTube, I have my own house now, but when I signed up for YouTube, like many moons ago, I had it in their address and I was like, mom, dad, please watch, um, like, please watch this letter because I need it. I want to, you know, get paid from YouTube. <laughs> so, so then I ordered a new one and it came to my house here. Oh, good. I just sold something. <laughs> oh, nice. You, it's, turn cha you gotta turn that cha-ching up. <laughs> I, you know, the funniest thing is, I, I never turn my sound on, so I don't even know what it sounds oh. like. I don't even know what it sounds like. <laughs> sounds like a cash register. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right, I have a customer who has yet to pick up her package. What happens? Do I keep the money? Does it get returned to me? Um, so I'm guessing that it's, is it at the post office, and the notice has been sent to the customer. So did you? Did you? Let me ask. Was it a girl or a boy? Um, I didn't. I didn't get to see Susan. Um, I would see. Did you send it out? Did it go to a PO box or, or is it to a business? Do you think? I don't know. Okay, we'll watch for that answer. We'll yeah. Come back to that. Let's see. Greg says he often wraps in brown paper. If yeah. I trust that the item inside will be protected enough. Okay. Yeah. Just remember, tape is your friend. Yes. Yeah. Watch Best my shipping friend. videos. You know I love my tape. <laughs> I get so much crap over how much tape I use. <laughs> tape is cheap insurance. <laughs> um, oh, my goodness. Okay. You want to answer this one? <laughs> What's up with the post office finances? Why, why are they going broke? So they're really not going broke. It's more of a political thing, and I don't really want to talk about it because okay, it goes political. <laughs> it goes oh, political. So Susan says it's in a Dropbox. What does that mean, Dropbox? I'm not sure, like a Dropbox where Susan? Hmm. I mean, because usually she, is she saying like delivered? So is it showing delivered <laughs> to like a customer? I don't know what that means. Like how, what? Why do you think the customer hasn't picked up? Is it signature required or something that you know that the customer hasn't picked it up? Yeah, I need more word. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. How often do you have disgruntled customers blame you for late missing packages? Do you Every know day. That it's not your fault. Yeah, I'm sure that you are the front man. So like the other day, it was a Monday and I had 3,500 letters. That's not including like, now that's just letters like, and that comes in sequential order. Um, then when we're at the post office in the morning, we, we throw the mail, like, like magazines, like, let's just say like sports illustrated or something like that. Um, and we put that, you know, in the case and it has to go in order. And when we pull that down now that's extra mail. So like, let's just say 1500 le letters and there's letters I have to put in there too, that were mismatched from other routes. Cause we're not perfect, you know, so nobody is. Um, but um, I had so much mail that day and usually I read all the names and I put it in the mailbox, but I always make sure that it's at the right house. And I know that like there's a 55 and older community that I deliver to and let's just say people come and go as they do. And, um, there's different names and it's not their name. It's literally just, it's that address, but it's not their name. And I had a lady come like, she's like, ah! I was like, oh man, here we go. And she comes over to the mail truck and she's like, this isn't my name. I'm like, ma'am, I'm so sorry. But, you know, it's Monday, you know, Sunday we didn't have mail and I have the most letters in the post office today. I'm just trying to get done. I'm so sorry. I usually read all the names. Don't be mad at me. I said, my name's Joey. <laughs> um, I'm Melissa's backup. And, um, if you have any other problems, you know, I, I'm, I'm really sorry. And she's like, Oh, I'm sorry. Like, you know, I was like, you can look at my truck. Like I have so much stuff here. Like I just have to keep moving, you know, I'm not going to read every single name and I'll be back in like 10 o'clock at night. 
you know, so I'm just not going to do that. <laughs> you just, you just helped me just have a little more grace there. Cause I, I, I get frustrated, like, cause I've put like the little sign that says these names only, but now you just made me understand why sometimes they could still put in, you know, that other piece of mail. So I'll be nicer. I'll be nicer. Yeah. It's, it's tough. I mean, just think about having 3,500 letters that you have to do in like literally five hours. Yeah. You're in that about the average day, like, that's that's a hard day. I think that's a hard day. I mean, normally it's about, let's say, two thousand. You know, fifteen hundred. That's doable. You know, I mean, everything's doable. I just I don't have time to like read every single name. Like I can read the address like fast. Like I know this is, um, one hundred Camino del Rio. Like boom. Like I'm gonna put it in the mailbox. You know. So. Yeah. Let's see. As some of you are asking questions that we actually have already answered. So when we're done, you can just go back and review kind of from the beginning. So we don't get redundant here. Oh, she says, looks like November 17th is getting returned. Do I refund the customer once I get it back? It's going on. You can refund the customer minus the shipping. Like you mm -hmm. paid that and yeah. Yeah. In Australia, we can get a PO drop box where parcels can get delivered away from our own address. Yes. Yeah, well, we have PO, we have PO boxes here too, that kind mm -hmm. of service. Yeah, let's see. Parcel locker. Okay. So like a parcel locker is basically my mail showing up right at my door. <laughs> <laughs> so like like let's just say like the businesses and stuff and there's a package where it can't fit in the actual mailbox but it can go into a parcel locker. Um so I I scan it and I put it in the parcel locker and there's a key. So like you take that key and you put it in their mailbox. Is that what you're talking about? I think that's what she's talking that's about. What, yeah. That's what a parcel locker is. So, yeah. So, how many stops is, say, 2,000 pieces of mail? <laughs> um, it all depends. I mean, um, like, let's just say we deliver to 700 or 800 houses a day, you know? Um, everyone gets about two, three letters, <laughs> you know? So, some people You're don't. Like 100 houses an hour. Yeah. And you got to move, you know, so. Unless you have like, like the, I'm trying to think how many, there's like 10 mailboxes together, you know. Yeah. You sometimes, of, or is it? sometimes there are, and like you could just do, 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 do. But I typically, I like the ones that are curbside and you just drive up to like the house and then the mailbox and you just put it right in and just zoom and keep going. I wish I had that. I wish yeah. I had that. Yeah. I like, I like the places where I've had like the mailbox right there. Right. <laughs> it feels yeah. good. That's your mailbox. <laughs> Any thoughts on global shipping? Is it better than regular international shipping? So I personally, I do um, global shipping. I, you know, everyone has their pros and cons on it. Um, but I have a, my, my really good friend. His name is Mountain Man Treasure. I don't know if you guys know him. Um, he has a, he did a live with somebody. I think it's called like Web Intrapert or something. I'm not saying it right, but it's some, it's Web Intrapert. I'm not saying it right. <laughs> something like that. I, I forget the name, but he has that and it will list in every eBay um, country, whatever, wherever they do eBay, um, it gets put on their site as well, like and whatever. And he gets more, um, he has more international um, sales than he does like regular. And it's, it's a really cool thing. If you guys could go check him out, he has an awesome video on it. Um, his name is mountain man treasure and it's called like international shipping web intrapert, whatever that word is. I can't say it. You know, the biggest, the biggest advantage of the, of the global shipping program and now the eBay standard international, which is a very similar program. So most people don't know that global shipping program is actually run by Pitney Bowes. It's not eBay. It's mm -hmm. their contract with Pitney Bowes who runs this big gigantic warehouse and anything that's going international that you use the program goes to this warehouse, it gets inspected and then it gets I, what I believe is put into like container parcel containers so that it's cheaper for them to send it over and that's how they make their money is the difference between what the customer paid and what it actually costs them because they're right. doing it in bulk. So that's how they make their money. Yeah. Um, but then eBay came up with the eBay standard international. 
And I'm not exactly sure who's the, who they've got running that, but it's a similar program. And for me, it's better on the West Coast because there's a California um, destination. And basically all you are responsible for is getting your package to like um, global shipping program is in Kentucky. For me, it's like California and that's it. Like we right. pay it I send my anything that happens after that is on them. So that's the big advantage. But I've heard there's disadvantages for the customers. So just have to get somebody's got to pay for it. Right. <laughs> somebody's paying for it. Yeah. And now they've changed global shipping program. It is not all categories of products anymore like it used to be. They mm. like a lot of the glass and collectibles, they no longer do. Wow. I'm going to have to go look into that more. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Make sure we covered everything, you guys, because we're about to wrap it up. I just want to say thank you, Danny. Like, I, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so appreciated. Like, I, oh, I love doing this. Too. Yeah. And Janet, we talked, that was the very first question we talked about was the flat rate. So we did, we did talk about that at length. I mean, Greg. <laughs> Greg's got questions. Besides the dog incident, have you had any memorable bad experiences during That's your my only bad experience? I think it's just dogs. I just they they get the best of me. <laughs> but I love animals, you know? So like it's so weird. Like you're afraid of them, but you're not. Thank you, Greg. Greg. Aided. Are they on the East Coast? Are is um, I don't know. Um, thriftastic thrifter. I don't know where else they, the, the, just look into the eBay standard international. That's what it's called. And I think they do have an East coast and a West coast. And I think there might be three warehouses that they ship out of. Hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Um, let's see. Yeah, once a package leaves the U.S., it's out of the hands of our postal system. Yep, that yep. is true. All right. Frankensteining boxes. What is the question, though? I love I, Frankensteining boxes. I just did one. And I'm probably, well, I was going to list this, but I'm probably going to give it to my um, <coughs> cousin for, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> my cousin for Christmas. It's a rock band, like Guitar Hero. And I had a Frankenstein a box that I bought on Facebook. I bought it for 25 bucks and I sold it for 124. It's brand new in the box. Nice. And yeah. I had to um I had to use two boxes, like a 1095, a 1092, and put it together. And I had to tape it. It was all messed up. It's so I hard. I don't know why. Together all the time. Really? <laughs> I need to figure out a better way to do it. Cause like, you know, especially, you know, because of the, the 12 by 12 by 12 is the, the, the cubic foot that is our, you know, before we go into dimensional weight, but the large priority box is 12 by 12 by eight. So mm. that's the most, what I, like I put two of those together and make it the 12 by 12 by 12. Yeah. <laughs> also so. strengthens the box when you put two of them together like that. Yeah. Is it like some double boxing? Yes. Yeah, I, I have to say, I I have learned some things today that give me a new appreciation. And I hope, if nothing else, that you guys will be nicer to your <laughs> mail delivery people knowing that. I mean, we we forget. I mean, this is human nature. So it's it's really easy to live in our bubble of our experience and, and what we see. And we don't realize the magnitude of the job that you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to personally thank you. Thank, thank you. I appreciate that. And, and for loving your job. Like, yeah, I love knowing that, you know, not all postal workers hate their job. <laughs> you know, they, they do like some people, like they're so miserable and that's why I want to kind of like get. That's everywhere. It's, oh. it's everywhere and in everything. You're always going to find the people that are unhappy. And I'm like, I, yeah, let's face it. I mean, I'm a full time eBayer, YouTuber, all that. And not every part of that is roses. Yeah. Trust me. Try yeah. reading some of the comments. Well, no, because you guys never see them. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's not every part of any job that's always great, it, but it is what you make of it, it is your attitude. 
it's choosing to look at the positive and just, you know, get through the parts you don't like because the reward is the parts that you like. Right. I mean, steady paycheck is a good part too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. For sure. But um, I want to show you guys real quick. I'm going to take you over. You don't have an eBay store yet, Joey. I don't. <laughs> and I'm coming up to the, all right. So like, listen, my mentality was when I started, I only had like 30, 40 things. And then I waited until like the 50, like the 50 mark where if you go over 50, you have insertion fees. And I was like, all right, I'll just wait until I get that. And then it went up to 200. So I was like, oh, I'll just wait until, you know, 200 because I got free, whatever, free, like 200 things. And then now I'm about to go over that 200. So I'm like, now I got to buy a store. <laughs> it's store time. It's store uh -huh. time. You know, here's what I tell people. Like the store has so many more benefits than just the free listings that are included. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, you get your shipping material coupon every quarter. So wait, let me ask. Let me ask that. My my girlfriend, she has the $5 store or mm -hmm. whatever, the $8 store. Do you get shipping material from that? No, not on that like, one. I was looking on her thing. I was like, I can't find it. Why? The next, why can't... One, up. The next yeah. one up. But okay. here's the biggest thing. Cause you're very niched. Like believe yeah. people don't realize they're niched when they're niched. You're niched. Like you have a very specific genre of stuff. Yeah. And by the way, your pictures are great. Your titles right. are great. Your pricing is great. Like I was going to look in here and see if I could like point anything I can help you with. I was like, no, you're, you're on track. Yeah. I've learned. Got um, it. I just like, you can see like different lighting and stuff. Like my man, Greg, my man, Greg Stewart. I love him. He sent me a light kit and I never had a light kit. I just had a, just a regular ring light. Like I was just, you know, just doing the best I can. And he sent me these lights and they're absolutely amazing. I'm so thankful for him. You're the one selling the dumbbell. That's going to go through the mail. I just yeah. spotted it. <laughs> yeah. I'm the one that's breaking your items guys. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so so you're, you're I keep saying store. You're not you are Joey Bada Bing 22. And there's yeah. the biggest reason you want a store. When you have a store, now you can get like a URL and say, here, go to my store. It's easy to tell people how to get to it, where it's really hard to search for someone that is just has a username. eBay's yeah, making yeah. it really hard. But categories, like if I'm just looking for shoes, I can go into your store uh -huh. and then just look in your shoes. Like it's great. And then you can do like, you know, sale categories and all that stuff. Yeah. So. I'm eventually I'm like, cause like I'm getting to the point where, you know, I need that store. <laughs> so, um, especially with all the perks that come with it, like you're ready, I'm, you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I just, I, I knew that I would definitely be ready for it. Like I, I, I wanted to jump into it. Like at first, like it was just a side hustle. Like I, I just wanted to make extra money. And then now it's like, I love this. Like I'm making more money on eBay than I'm making like at work. So it's weird. It's, it, it's like, I, awesome. I'm going to just tell you, I'm going to tell everybody the online selling business is in its infant hood still. Yeah. It's just, it's like a toddler right now. It's, yeah. it's baby new. And if nothing else this year has been phenomenal for training people to buy online. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the perfect storm for a fantastic 2021 of yeah. sales. You'll, this whole thing has just skyrocketed people into the online world. Yeah. And eBay I'm, really, really focused on the used and refurbished goods right now. Like they know that's their uniqueness over mm -hmm. Amazon. Yep. And that's their marketing strategy right now. That's so, why I love eBay. That's why I love place. eBay. We're in a good place. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, this no, thank you. <laughs> it's been awesome. Everybody, make sure you go over to Joey's channel, which is Joey Bada Bing 22, just like it says there under his name, uh, under his name, under his face. Under my face, under my beard. <laughs> and like you do Monday night listing, you know. Yes. Live. So every, every Monday night, I do a live listing at 9 p.m. So like, I figured when I first started doing YouTube, um, I wanted to do interviews because everyone else was doing it, you know, and um, it's awesome. Like, I really love the, like the the interaction with doing interviews and stuff. But like, I feel like I know everybody now. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to switch my like I'm going to transition to like my own thing of what I would want. So I was like, you know what? I want to do listing lives. And I felt like that's more productive for me and it's more productive for you. So 
you know, I'm going to be sitting there, you know, sometimes I take pictures of everything and then I'll just sit here and talk to everybody, talk to everybody in the chat and list at the same time. And it gives a motivation to other people to come in, hang out. We all love eBay. We all love talking about it. And um, I laugh, I joke, you know, I'm a funny guy. So, you know, I, I just want to have fun. That's, that's yeah. my main thing about this. And that's why I love YouTube because I want to take your life away. Come hang out with me and let's have fun. Let's list and make money. So like, that's the main thing. So that's awesome. So everybody go over to Joey's channel. Now that's nine o'clock Eastern, Eastern, six o'clock Pacific. Yes. You can go ahead over to Joey's channel tonight and list, list, yeah. got a list. That's the number one. You know, if, if you're not getting the sales you want, list. Yes. <laughs> Keep listing. That's what you got to do. This is my All perfect. Right. This is my perfect sign for everybody. I always show this when you come in. So yes, yes. Don't wait. List it now. Do it now. Yes. Let's go. That's my main thing. I'm gonna make show. money sitting on a shelf somewhere. Nope. Never. <laughs> so. All right. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us and asking all the great questions. We'll be doing more of these kind of interview kind of things here and there because uh, I love learning stuff too. I love. Hey, I. I love the perk that like I make sure my questions get answered. <laughs> Not that I missed anybody's, but right. if you have questions after the fact, leave them in the comments. Yes. So, you know, I read every single comment that comes through. I mean, I'm getting to the point where sometimes I can only leave the little, the little heart or the, but that's to let you know that I did read your comment. Yes. I try to answer as many as I can, but uh, and don't leave, just don't leave any nasty comments. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, lately, hmm, right. <laughs> show on those. Right. Anyway, everybody, go have a fantastic day. This is the beginning of a great week. We are on the countdown to Christmas. Let's go. Get those packages going. And with that, go be profitable and make it fun. See you on the next one. See you guys.